So in this video I'm going to be talking about stress, strain, and then I'm going to move on to look at the energy stored in a stretched object, and then finally to look at young modulus. So let's start from the beginning. Stress. So this is the force applied, applied divided by the cross-sectional area on which the force is applied. So we've got, as I said in the previous video, tensile forces are regarded as positive, so stretching forces are positive, and compressive forces are negative. So we look at this diagram over here, we've got this area in which a force is applied here. So the stress, which is given this symbol here, is the force divided by area, which means it has the unit of newtons per meter squared, or newton meters to the minus two. The next thing you need to know about is strain. So strain is the change in length divided by its original length. So if you see on here, this has been stretched by length E. So that's the change in length. And its original length is L. So strain is the change in length divided by L. So this has no unit as it is just a ratio of two lengths. So obviously that's not going to end up having a unit. So quite often with these you plot stress strain graphs. So what we've got here is a typical stress strain graph for a metal type material. So there's two things you need to be able to identify. One is the ultimate tensile stress often called UTS and the other is breaking stress or sometimes called BS. Not to be confused with the other kind of BS but never mind. So the maximum tensile, ten, maximum tensile stress, or the ultimate tensile stress, is the maximum. So you can see here, this is the maximum stress up here. It's called the ultimate stress. So here we can see that strain stops. So we've got the breaking stress. The odd thing you'll notice here is that the breaking stress is often lower than the UTS. So the key thing is it must have already achieved the ultimate tensile strength stress and then it just keeps extending and actually the stress gets lower but it is those two ways round. So let's have a look at some graphs. So one of the interesting things to be able to calculate is the amount of energy stored in the material when it's stretched. So that's the type of elastic strain energy that has built up in it. So you need to be able to divide your graph like this. So this is a force extension graph in this case. So let's just label that. We will have a look at how this applies to a stress strain graph in a second. Oh, what am I doing? No units. So we've got a force extension graph. So up to the elastic limit, or the limit of proportionality, we've got here. This is a nice triangle up until this point, so it can be expressed really nicely with this equation here, because the area of a triangle is half the base times the height, and putting in that one, oh, that's not come out quite right, that should be half ke squared, so this is for a spring where you know f is equal to ke, so you just substituted that in there. Afterwards, once you get into this curve section, you need a strategy for calculating the area under the graph, because that's actually what the amount of energy is. So there are various mathematical processes you can use. You can use integration, if you know the equation of it. You can use a trapezium rule, which gives you quite a nice approximation. Simpson's rule, which is a slightly better version of the trapezium rule. Or, most often what you'll use in AS physics, square counting. So we go back to primary school, and you go, oh, well, there's that square there, there's that square there, there's that square there, and there's that square there, there's that square there, oh, there's another whole square there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I reckon that between these two, I reckon that's ten. Between these two, probably eleven squares. So and then you work out what the area of each square represents, and you can get an approximation for the total amount of energy. And in exam questions, that type of thing, you won't be expected to do anything more sophisticated than counting squares in this case. 
because lots of people won't have come across the trapezium or Simpson's rule or integration of that stuff yet, so that's not examined in this course. So, moving on. So, the next thing we're going to look at is the Young Modulus. So, loads of people call it the Young's Modulus. Absolute nonsense, it's the Young Modulus, and please make that distinction. So, the Young Modulus is a property of a material, and it's the ratio between the stress and the strain in a material. So, you can calculate the Young's Modulus on the linear section. So where, actually I don't like the fact I've written linear because that's kind of nonsense, it's the actually the directly proportional section. Since it goes through zero, let's be proper about this. So you can calculate the Young's modulus on this proportional set, and it's the change in the stress, and we've got the change in the strain, so it's the gradient of this graph. And different materials will have different Young's moduli, I think it is, moduli, moduli. And so you can use it when you're trying to pick a material that you need for a particular application. And just like for a fourth extension graph, you can actually use these graphs to calculate the energy stored. Again, it's the area under this graph. So in the proportional section, it's half stress times strain. Or one, just like before, if you were into the non-proportional section, you would do the square counting method once again.